I never knew St. Nick had a dark side. That is, of course, until we moved to Germany. It's sort of ironic that the birthplace of all of our beautiful and magical Christmas traditions come from this land. Yet also the most terrifying Christmas nightmares also are lurking in the woods. <laughs> Christmas for me has always been about the joy, the magic, the wonder, the anticipation of Christmas morning. But little did I know, on the other side of the pond, little German and other European children were being told the stuff of total Christmas nightmares. What do you think, I'm being dramatic or something? I mean, I do have a flair for the dramatic, it's true, but why don't you just see the images for yourself? And I'll let you decide. But be prepared, it isn't pretty. Makes you want to sit by a nice warm fire with a hot cup of cocoa, doesn't it? Yeah, me neither. Now, before you go thinking something awful about Germans, there's a lot more to this story. So, let us explain. Cue the intro. From Krampus to Connect Rubricht, there are devils of Christmas all over Europe. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about them. And we're gonna show you some actual footage <laughs> from a scary event we just attended called a Krampuslauf. So hey everybody. Hello. Welcome back to our channel. You know us, we're the Meg Falls, a family of six with four kids. A cat and two hamsters. And we moved from the USA to Germany in February of 2021, and we've been sharing our adventures with you here on this channel. So something that is a huge culture shock for most Americans is how there are devils of Christmas, not just in Germany, but all over Europe. When we first learned about Krampus, which is down here in the Alpine region, quite frankly, we were shocked. <laughs> it is wild. And like I said at the beginning of the video, we just recently experienced our first Krampuslauf. So in this video, we're going to talk about not only Krampus, but Knecht Ruprecht. Those are the two sort of devils of Christmas from Germany. We're also going to talk about a few of the other ones from other countries in Europe. We're going to show you some footage from the Krampuslauf that we attended. We're going to talk about where this dark folklore comes from. We're going to let our children tell you their experience in their own words. So what's interesting is that it seems all of these traditions of these scary Christmas things seem to have the same origin from the Celts. I mean, the Celts were big all over Europe. Of course, in Hallstatt, where we visited, some think that was sort of proto-Celtic. This Alpine region seems to be where a lot in Switzerland also seems to be where the Celts originally started from. So it's not strange that this sort of tradition is strong here, but you find it all over in Europe. There's these scary Christmas traditions everywhere and they manifest themselves in, in different ways. Yes. They all seem to come from this end of fall, beginning of winter, Samhain tradition in the Celts. And it's actually the same idea behind Halloween and All Hallows Eve that we talked about in our earlier video about Halloween. The whole point of Samhain is that you dress up in these scary things to scare away the evil spirits. So the whole point is you're trying to get the evil spirits to go away. Right, so the costumes themselves aren't evil, it's to scare the evil. Right. Yeah. And so it seems that this is where there's this beginning of Christmas time Samhain tradition. And then the Christians come and, and take control and Christmas becomes big and it's about the same time as Samhain and they all sort of mix together. together. Yes. And so, you know, in a lot of these European Christmas traditions, you've got a Santa Claus or a Father Christmas Saint uh, or Saint Nick mm -hmm. uh, that is joined by these scary things. <laughs> 
Yes, because the church, the Catholic church was trying to get rid of these old pagan traditions, these old Celtic traditions. Because people still wanted to celebrate those. Right, they couldn't get the people to stop celebrating <laughs> Samhain. So they just melded the yeah. traditions, the pagan traditions of Samhain with these scary costumes and scary practices, and they melded it together with Santa Claus and Saint Nick. And, and <laughs> well, it wasn't Santa Claus back then, it was Saint Nick mm -hmm. and, and Father Christmas. So because we live in Germany, today we're gonna to focus on the German Devils of Christmas, which are Krampus and Knecht Ruprecht. And if you wanna see the Devils of Christmas from all over Europe, I'll show you this map here. There's different names in different regions. They each have their own horrifying and scary folklore that goes with them. Like for instance, one of them that I can't get out of my head is from Iceland and is this huge, scary, gigantic cat, <laughs> which is just sad. Now you've made kids, children scared of cats. <laughs> so it's this cat that runs around to the different children's houses and sees if they're wearing the new clothes that they got for Christmas and he eats them if they aren't wearing the clothes they got for Christmas. <laughs> I mean, just stuff like this. And so it seems like a lot of this has sort of morphed into trying to get children to behave. Parents are always looking for tools to get their children to do the things that they want, that whether it's being beaten with a stick or parents given a rod or getting eaten by the cat spanked. Or, or spanked or whatever, it's even made its way into American Christmas culture too, where Santa mm -hmm. keeps the naughty list, you know, the naughty and nice. Are you on the naughty list or are you on the nice list? And mm -hmm. that's sort of, parents hang that over the children's head all year long. Yeah. You know, if you don't do this or you don't behave, you're going to end up on the naughty list and you're not gonna, you're gonna get coal in your stocking in, instead of presents. Well, it's still, bit of, you know, mental manipulation, if it not is. being physically, not being mm -hmm. physically beaten, but you know, it's still a way for yeah. parents to hang things over kids' heads to get them to do what they want. So, you know, they're all now, these- in the Middle Ages, that made sense. I mean, yeah. the Middle Ages were freaking barbaric, right? <laughs> Everything about that times were barbaric. So, you know, it makes sense from those sensibilities. In today's time, it sounds, it's, we know it as cruel and abusive. It's right. abuse, it's emotional and, and sometimes physical abuse. But back then, of course, it was just the way things were done. Right. And Kevin and I, when we first became parents 13 years ago, our oldest is 13, uh, we decided early on, Santa doesn't have a naughty list in our house. Yeah. You are getting presents no matter what because we love you and we love you unconditionally. And it doesn't matter what your behavior is, you're getting presents because all of us are both good and bad. Mm. All of us, especially adults. Children are just learning. They're being trained. They don't know how to behave. It's not good or evil. They just don't know how to behave yet in a civilized society, you know? So. That's another topic for another day, but <laughs> yeah. we decided early on we weren't going to carry out that tradition. And, and I do think many parents aren't really using that so much in the U.S. anymore. Back when we were kids, definitely they were using it. Uh, my parents did not use it with me, by the way. Not so much for me either. Well, okay, so maybe it wasn't really widespread when we were children. Well, I, I mean, for many of my friends it was. Yeah, you, well, I mean, it's in all of the Christmas stories. You know, there's Santa with the naughty that's list true. and the nice list. Even in more modern ones, like the Polar Express, you know, that's not that old, and there was naughty true. and nice lists in that too, so. Yeah, so even if you don't teach your kids or use it in your own still household, they're so influenced. In fact, even Ella still asks me, oh no, if I'm bad, she literally said this a few weeks ago, oh, if I'm bad, Santa won't bring me presents. Yeah. And I told her, I said, no, Ella, that's not true. You're getting <laughs> gifts no matter what because we love you unconditionally. That's not unconditional love to take away something. So I can get passionate about that topic. I'm, <laughs> I'm very passionately against that and don't like it. So Krampus, it originates from the word for claw or Krampen, and uh, he's like a sidekick to Saint Nicholas. Uh -huh. And so Krampus is half goat, half demon. He goes around to punish all of the naughty children. I mean, in America, Bad children need to be careful. They might get coal in their stocking, but they're not going to be chased by a half demon, uh -uh. half goat. <laughs> uh -uh. Mm -hmm. This is frightening. Yeah. And so for us, of course, Krampus is the way we're seeing it because we live here in Bavaria. Mm -hmm. And Krampus seems to be very big, especially in the Alpine regions, mm -hmm. much bigger even in Austria than it is here in Bavaria. You know, stretches all the way down into even Trento and Sud Tirol and Italy and even out into the Czech Republic and Hungary. So there's a big swath down here in sort of Central Europe 
it, especially around the Alps, where Krampus is a big thing. At least here for us in Bavaria, Krampus is half goat, half demon. I guess mm -hmm. in Austria, it's half wolf, half demon. So he's slightly yeah. different. Yeah, in Tyrol, in Austria. And mm -hmm. here, of course, he's got big giant horns and uh -huh. yeah, pretty scary looking. So what's interesting is in 1932, in Austria, they actually prohibited celebrating Krampus and having these Krampus laufs that we have today. They passed around all these pamphlets saying it was evil, it was too scary. So even back then they were catching on because it is scary. <laughs> um, but then recently at the turn of this current century, so around the year 2000, there was a big resurgence in a lot of the old traditions. Like, I mean, also- The Trachten. The Trachten. Started coming back. Yeah. yeah. For Americans, that's the Lederhosen and the Dirndls. All of those old traditions had a big resurgence at the beginning of this century. The Krampus and Krampuslauf was one of those. Mm. So today, Austrians see Krampus as sort of the glamorous anti-hero. He represents <laughs> sort of the rebel, our wild side, and all of us. And so I like how they've turned it into that because, yeah, we've all got this dark side, don't we? We've all got this rebel side that wants to be selfish, that wants to do things our own way, mm. you know, that sometimes wants to be mean. Like, we We've all got that side to us. And so that's what Krampus is supposed to represent today. And he also, this is very important, he also represents a defiant attitude towards the commercialization of Christmas, <laughs> which I find really interesting. So now we're going to talk about the Krampus Läufe or the Krampus runs or the Krampus parades. There's a few <laughs> different ways you can translate it into English. So these Krampus Läufe is a tradition that goes all the way back to the Middle Ages. And it's where all these young men and men would dress up in these goat, half goat, half demon or half wolf, half demon costumes and run through the streets of town scaring little children and women and just being wild and drunk and would kind of use it as an opportunity to get away with things that they could not normally get away with when they didn't have a mask on. So what's interesting is they're still having those Krampus Läufe today, yeah. which sounds really weird, <laughs> but we just attended one. <laughs> And so today, I don't know, the event isn't too much different than what I just described from no, what goes on in the medieval much, times. No, it's not that much different. I mean, there's still a bunch of men. I think there were some women in some of those costumes Maybe. though, which is really fun. Yeah. People dressed in these horrifyingly scary costumes who run through the streets of town. In fact, just last night, Kevin saw, last night was December 5th, um, yeah. Kevin saw uh, a big group of yeah, walking <laughs> of down the street, down right, the street. Right, down, right down, right down, right outside of our neighborhood. At least when you read on the event organizers' webpage, they say that they have put gates, these metal gates or sort of crowd control gates, all the way along the path. At least mm -hmm. the one that we went to, 
And so the Krampuses were contained inside of there and they never came out. They would pretend to sort of try to jump over the fence and try and get you. Um, so there was the opportunity if you wanted to have a little distance that you could step back. But of course, if you get a little too close, that's where they can take out, they've got these little broom or a little whip switch type thing and they smack you with it. Usually on the legs, you know, they were careful not to do it, I think on the upper body, but still, it can smart, you know, getting smacked on your legs with this broom thing. Uh-huh. And originally that was to drive out the evil spirits, I've been told by, by many of you, especially on Instagram. In my Instagram stories, I showed our experience with the Krampus Lauf, and many of you said, yeah, they're supposed to hit you and it's supposed to hurt because they're trying to drive the evil spirits out of you. It goes back to the And pagan. that's the connection back to Samhain where you're exactly. trying to scare the evil spirits away so that you'll be right. saved. And if it doesn't hurt, the evil spirit hasn't been driven out of you. <laughs> so in our instance, we went to the Krampuslauf and we were just naive and didn't know that, like I had heard that they do hit you. I guess I didn't, it really hadn't sunk in that it would hurt. So we did stand up right near the front. Well, me, Grayson, and Griffin did. I didn't. Griffin me did. and Gabriel were smart and we stood back. And they stood back. <laughs> And Ella is little, so they don't hurt the little kids. They only hurt you if you're about nine years old and up. So Ella was safe. So the rest of us, I got hit, and so did Griffin and Grayson, and they got hit bad. It really hurt. I'll let you also hear it from Grayson. I have footage that I'll show you after we finish talking about Krampus. So they say that this festival in, in the Tyrolean region of the Alps is just as big as Mardi Gras is in New Orleans. For instance, in Salzburg, there's over 200 Krampus clubs or Vereins as we know them here in Germany and in Austria. They spend many months creating their own costumes, sometimes buying them. They're very expensive, very elaborate costumes. Mm -hmm. And they spend months planning for their Krampuslauf. Mm -hmm. And so we went to one, not in Salzburg, but nearby. In a you know, pretty small town. Pretty small town. And you know, every Krampus had a number on them and they were like in the two and two and three hundreds of the numbers. They were actually seven. 720. There were 720. They were supposed compass. to be 900. I'm not sure why it went down to 720, but. So yeah. there were hundreds and hundreds of these The Krampuses. parade went on for hours and hours and, and hours. And the costumes were really elaborate. They were very, very impressive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they realistic. look like each costume looked like it cost three or 400 euros. Yeah, they least, had to. I mean. Giant horns and I mean, these, yes. these huge their cowbells tongues. they wear on their yes. backs. They also jingling. have chains that they rattle, which is supposed to represent hell and <laughs> being mm -hmm. in chains. <laughs> and they shake the chains at you and scare you with the chains. The bells are really loud and they, uh, man, they can kind of hurt your ears. They're so loud and the mm -hmm. bells are to scare you. It, apparently it's well known among locals that if you don't want to be hit, you must stand back and you stand away from the gates. <laughs> so we were just kind of dumb and stood towards the front. <laughs> but it is still a wild, drunken party. There, I know this sounds weird to Americans. There are a lot of kids there. It, it's more of a, a wild, drunken thing for the young adults, college age. You know, It's still kind of a fun party atmosphere, you could say, with a lot of scare. I mean, to me, it reminded me of a haunted house in America. Those are big. I like haunted houses. Mentally, there's like this physical barrier that I know they're not going to actually touch me. The Krampuslauf is different because they actually whip you. So <laughs> it takes the haunted house to the next level for me. Um, but it reminded me of kind of a haunted house, Halloween. It felt like Halloween at Christmas time. That's what right. it felt like mm -hmm. to an American, you know, from an American perspective. These Krampusloife can take place from November all the way through Epiphany, which is the 12 days after Christmas. And different towns all in this area will have their Krampusloife and parades and things. So last week we had a video about making Weihnachtsplätzchen, mm -hmm. Christmas cookies, German Christmas cookies. And while we were making the cookies, Grayson and Ella shared their experiences of what they thought of the Krampuslauf. Grayson, can you explain why your face had black ash on it this morning and you have red in it's your hair? Stuff. So it's because we went to the Krampuslauf yesterday. The Krampus, they came over and just swiped their hands on my faces and they, their hands were black and they had a bit of red on it too. So that's why my face is a bit red. What was your impression of the Krampuslauf? I liked it except for the time when they hit me really hard on my wound. Uh-huh, yeah. Gra Grayson yeah. already had a hurt knee and they whipped him on the knee. <laughs> on purpose! 
<laughs> on purpose. But Ella, what did you think of it? Good. You really liked it, didn't you? Yeah, and Griffin also got well, smacked. Ella didn't get whipped because yep. she was with a bunch of other little kids. And yeah. Krampus said, don't whip the little kids. That's right. They start, they start to whip the kids who are about eight or nine and older. Yeah. And they hurt both fun, Griffin though. and Grayson. Well, it was fun, but though. We realized that we were naive because if you're standing at the front of the fence while they're walking through, that means that you're ready and willing to be hit and, and is part of the danger. And we didn't really understand that. We figured it out real fast once the two of them got hit. Well, and it hurt. And so the... As a sorry, they, the Krampus that hit, whipped him hugged him and gave him a little piece of candy. And I did not think that they would that the Krampus would also have candy. It's like they're, it's like they knew that some kids may get hurt and don't. Uh, yeah, exactly. And we, I even saw a grown woman crying and running away from one of them. She got quite scared. So, I don't know. I don't know what to make of the Krampus laugh. I thought it was fun, even though I got hurt. Yeah, you were upset for a little bit, but then you recovered and went back to playing. Yeah. Or went back to the parade. My mama bear instincts came come out. When my kids are hurt and they're upset, then I'm not happy and having fun anymore. <laughs> so that's how I felt. I was having tons of fun at first. I thought they were <laughs> hysterical and they were so scary and gruesome, but it was kind of fun. They were just high-fiving the kids at first. Yeah, they were high-fiving me and also pulling my hat down. They pulled your hat down? Yeah, the, the, one of the funny things happened when I was standing next to a teenager, and so the Krampus uh, took her hat off and ran away with it, and it made it look like he was stealing it, or she. Um, uh-huh. And so then he, he, he just walked back, and he was like pretending that he didn't know that it was hers. I've heard that the Krampuslauf in Munich is not very scary, that they don't hit anyone. So we've been told that the Dorfer, the, the village Krampuslaufs, are the where things get wild. So Yeah, they even try to hop the fence. Well, obviously they won't. They just pretend that they're going to hop the fence. Yes. Like there's a little fence type thing. And they shake and rattle the fence, yeah. which is very much like a haunted house in the U.S. So Kevin, what was your impressions of the Krampus love? I mean, it was interesting. It was fun in a way because it was scary. Right where, sort of in the beginning of where they started, there were a lot more little kids and they were playing music and it was more of a party atmosphere. Where we first were positioned was nor more near the end and there weren't as many people and yeah. I think the Krampus w Krampuses were a little bit more active there. Rowdy. Yeah. Wild. Uh, yeah, and then and then we did go, you know, more towards the the, the beginning and that's where Ella was actually with our friends the whole time. And so it was a little kindler and gentler there. Yes. In a way. Uh, and, and then when you get farther off, you know, from the main area, that's where things were a little crazier. So, um, but, you know, I, I stayed away from, the, from right up on the edge. Kevin was so, smart. So I didn't get hit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was interesting. And, you know, you, you ask the kids and they're like, well, maybe we might want to go back. Maybe not. I don't know. It was, it was interesting. It so was it mixed was, feelings. It was definitely mixed feelings. Uh, it was a party yeah. atmosphere and yet yeah. still a bit scary. And, uh, yeah, so it was very different. It was, I mean, I, at first, like Kevin said, at the beginning of the parade, it was also a lot of fun that all the campuses were coming by and high-fiving the kids and having fun with them and playing with them. And then it started to get more and more aggressive as the parade went on. So mm. I don't know why it gets more aggressive, <laughs> but um, once the, my two, once our two boys got hit and they were quite upset and just wanted to leave after that, like the mama bear instinct in me just mm. kicked in and it was like, Oh, I just want to get out of here. My children got hurt. They're upset. We just want to leave. But then they said, the boys were like, no, nah, we don't want to leave. We want to go back for more. And they kept going back for more. <laughs> so it is that flirting with danger. We right. all, that's the, what, I mean, and that's what Krampus is supposed to represent. The wild side. Flirting yeah. with our wild side. And you do sort of get that experience. You're flirting with the dark. You're flirting with your wild side. And... Yeah. It was a lot more fun once we went down to our friends and finally caught up with our friends. We, we went in different cars, so we got separated. Um, 
and there were a lot of people there. It was very crowded. Mm -hmm. They were selling glue vine and all kinds of liquor and <laughs> alcohol, of course, and, and also food. And so, yeah, it was, I yeah. mean, it is a lot of fun. And, and interestingly enough, they had a bunch of security people in with the Krampuses. Yeah. So they would tell like people to come. Yeah, kind of like handlers. And they were telling the Krampuses, hey, calm down or, yes. you know, go easy on that person or whatever. So it was interesting that they had people, you know, the organizers of the, of the event uh -huh. had sort of security out there to keep, try and keep things Not from getting too Not for the crowd, but for the Krampuses. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. To keep them in line. Yeah. And yet, our friends were telling us that they're well known for drinking a bunch of schnapps, which is really big in the Alpine region and in Austria and down here too. They drink a bunch of schnapps before they start the parade. And it is still common that they, that they do come into the parade completely drunk. And that's why their behavior can get out of hand and they might start whipping a kid more than they would if they weren't drunk. Right. So, I mean, that sounds like, <laughs> if any of my American friends are watching this, they're just probably like, <laughs> I know it sounds horrible. Yeah. It sounds terrible. But we also have those things in America with haunted houses and with scary Halloween stuff. And people will make their yard all scary. And when the kids go trick or treating, they're scared. Right. You know, so we do that as well. But you don't get actually touched or hurt. So right. it's a little different. To me, I, I feel like getting whipped takes it to a level I don't like, <laughs> but I'm not from this area. It's not my tradition or culture. So we try to keep an open mind about it. Right. And, and for those of you who are Bavarian or Austrian, and this is huge where you come from and you like it, I'd love to hear your comments about it below and you know what it means to you and why you enjoy it if you do enjoy it. Krampus is not the only thing that's done here in Germany. There's also Connect Ruprecht. He is decidedly less terrifying looking <laughs> than Krampus, but he basically does the same thing. Mm -hmm. He doesn't actually whip the children, but rather he gives rods to the parents so that they go, go home and whip the children. Yeah. So, oh. you know, it's kind of the same thing. It but... makes my stomach hurt. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so glad that Europe has evolved far past all of these barbaric practices. <laughs> it's awful. But at least it's now just tradition rather than a part of everyday life. Right, now it's just a funny story that people tell or these funny parades that you go to that are scary and fun and... So Connect Ruprecht dresses in a brown or a black robe. He used to have dark skin. Uh, he has a long beard. He kind of looks a little bit like St. Nick with the long beard. He carries a, a rod or a walking stick. Also has a bag in the back. However, some instances say that he would kidnap children and put them in the bag, naughty children. Other instances I read said that his bag is full of treats. Maybe that's what it's morphed into to today. Yeah, right. Instead of stealing children back there, you have candy to give away. Yeah. And they did that at the Krampuslauf too, that they gave out candy. They gave out candy. Yeah, the sometimes they'd too. whip a kid and then give them a piece of candy. <laughs> right. Well, now that, now that your demons have been Bells. expelled, you here have some candy, True. kid. That's probably what it is, actually. <laughs> and the treats that Connect Ruprecht has in his bag are tangerines, peanuts, and gingerbread. Yeah, it's the traditional, traditional ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I tried to find a map to see where Connect Ruprecht is celebrated or where it comes from in the rest of Germany. I really couldn't find anything, so I'm not exactly sure. We got many comments, which I'm gonna share with you here in this video as well, from our video that we did on the dark German legends, where many of you share your experience with Connect Ruprecht, and some of you say you're from Northern Germany. So as far as I can tell, it's from Baden-Württemberg all the way up through Hamburg and into Northern Germany. So. I'm not exactly sure. It seems like it's just sort of scattered all throughout. Yeah. So here's what Germans have to say about Connect Ruprecht and Krampus in their own words. Bunter Alltag says, Born and raised in Western Germany, I didn't know Krampus existed before I heard of that figure a few years ago. Here and in northern parts of Germany, I suppose Nikolaus is accompanied by Knecht Ruprecht. Not a demonic figure, but an also bearded man dressed in black or brown robes who punishes bad children with a root, Reisegruta, a rod made of a bunch of thin twigs. Today he just gives the rod to bad children as a present, like the coal in America, instead of beating them up with it. Hildegard says, Concerning Krampus, especially in the southern part of Germany, there are a number of traditions around Nikolaustag. It can be Krampus, it can also be other guys like Connect Ruprecht. 
In my childhood, we were threatened with Connect Ruprecht, who will bring a bundle of birch or canes as a threat for bad behavior instead of the sweets and goods from St. Nikolaus. I remember that you could buy such birch cane bundles filled with some sweets to add a little humor to the threat, and you may find it in your Gummistiefel, that's rain boots, the next morning. Anyway, when I was really small, I was scared from the strict and probably mean Connect Ruprecht, and I was long mad at my mother when I got older for saying things like, he will stuff me into his huge sack and carry me away. Thank goodness my father had taken me secretly aside to tell me not to worry. He would beat him up if he ever dared to harm his kids. But yes, in my childhood, the nasty part was still common, and I remember some neighbor kids being in fear before those days as well. For me, an absolute no-go to treat kids. My mother even tried that with her first grandkids, but when we were nearly adults, we told her to stop that nonsense and change things to the better. Not to blame my mother too much, since she had a horrible childhood and grew up under mean and unloving conditions. Mm, that's sad, isn't it? Jules says, I was definitely afraid of Krampus. When I was a small child, I opened the door expecting St. Nikolaus, but I only saw Krampus. I immediately turned on my heel and ran back, panicked to my parents. Even as an adult, I feel uneasy when I see Krampus runs. I think they've got better, but I remember them being pretty rough, especially towards women and children, stealing hats, messing up hair, and picking them up or dragging them along. Cosmos60 says, Thank you for these dark stories from Germany, which I haven't heard before. Besides the companion of St. Nikolaus, I grew up in the Rhineland, so we called him Knecht Rudwicht. He was more like kind of an unfriendly dwarf, carrying a sack and a rod of small branches. This was intended to beat kids who did not behave properly over the course of the past year. But we really were not afraid of him because we never really felt guilty. We were more eager to clean up our winter boots and to select the biggest one in order to receive more gifts. So in the morning of St. Nikolaus, we found our boots filled with nuts, mandarins, chocolates, and plus a little rod too. But this one also had chocolates in it, so Connect Ruprecht wasn't mad with us. Connie Bruckner says, It was my very first winter in Vienna. I was only 25 years old, and no one had told me anything about Krampuslauf. I had seen the chocolates, but that's all. I was looking at some pretty decorations at an advent market, and suddenly I felt a hefty lash of twigs on my behind and legs. I turned around to see some horrible mask and the sound of laughter. I didn't think it was funny at all. Of course, I cried out and I cursed. I heard more screams, but also sounds of laughter, and saw people dressed in black and red wearing fearsome masks. I had no idea what this was all about. Hurried to a phone box to call my husband, we were newlyweds, and only then did he tell me about the custom. From then on, I avoided going downtown every December 5th until two decades later, until our 10-year-old daughter begged me to take her to see them. She squealed with horror and delight. My Austrian husband tells me that as a child in the 1950s, St. Nikolaus would be accompanied by Krampus. He said, not too scary, he said, just dressed in black and red, so no mask. And when St. Nick read from his big book where he noted all of the good deeds of everyone in the room, including the kindergarten teachers, and he mentioned something naughty someone had done or was doing, Krampus would rattle his chain, but that's all. Every child would get a bag of goodies and maybe a little toy. Some people would have St. Nick come to their homes. In the 80s and 90s, it was only St. Nick who came by. I think it is still the same. Micah says, Krampus is more of a thing in the Bavarian Alps as well as Austria. In the southwest, near Lake Constance, the companion of St. Nikolaus, or Santa, is called Knecht Ruprecht. Knecht being a farmhand or servant, but the word is also related to the English knight. He's not as scary as Krampus, but his task is not only to carry the sacks with the presents, but also an empty sack to put particularly naughty kids in and take them away with him. At the time of my grandparents, that could really happen sometimes, but they let the scared kids out as soon as they came to the street. And his insignias included a bundle of willow rods, which could be used to chase in evildoers. In some regions, either Knecht Ruprecht or Krampus are also known as leaders of the wild hunt in the 12 days between Christmas and Epiphany, which are also known as the Roynechte, or Harsh Nights. That legend goes presumably back to old Germanic customs and beliefs. In Scandinavia, the wild hunt is also known as Odin's Hunt. Another great video. Had so much fun watching it. It's interesting how stories are told differently from family to family. I was born and raised in Nuremberg. I never had heard of Krampus until one of my friends told me about her childhood in Austria. 
When I was growing up, we put our shoes or boots out by the door on November 11th, St. Martin's Day. St. Nicholas came around the neighborhood that night and put chocolate, nuts, and maybe a tangerine or an apple in the boots for the good children. The bad ones got coal and a whip so that their parents could whip them. When my three brothers and I were small, we were always worried that we would find coal and a whip, but thank God we never did. For our Catholic friends, we were raised Protestant, St. Nicholas came around the neighborhood on December 6th to do the same. It sounds funny now, but as children, we believed it. Sarah, I agree that cruelty to children is never okay. People to this day still like to scare their kids to make them behave, and that is very unfortunate. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> and we wish you a Merry Christmas without any devils or demons. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the demons out of Christmas. <laughs> Y'all have a great rest of your week. Okay. Cheers. Cheers.